how's it going everybody welcome back to another video here and right in front of us we have the pixel 3a a device that's been making headlines over the last couple of weeks since its unveiling at google io 2019 and well before that months before that with all the leaks all the the different news articles what it was going to have was it going to have the snapdragon 700 or the 670 now at google io they unveiled it and they unveiled a new color called purplish, which is the one that I have here in front of me. And so we're going to talk a little bit about it in this review. My experiences, specs, and all that good stuff for you guys out there. So the Pixel 3a is a budget option for Google if you want to get a Pixel device. Now the Pixel 3 goes for $799. The Pixel 3 XL goes for $899. However, at the Google Store, they're both on sale. $599 for the Pixel 3 and uh, $699 for the Pixel 3 XL. So if you're wanting water resistance, wireless charging, glass back, uh, dual front facing cameras, if you're willing to spend a couple of hundred more than $399, by all means, go for it. However, if you really want to save some money, the Pixel 3a is no slouch and it doesn't, it doesn't pull back any punches from what it is. Now, I like to think that the Pixel 3a actually pays homage to the Pixel 1 and the Nexus as its build quality, obviously, polycarbonate, which uh, people will, will downplay it because it is plastic. And yes, in general, it is plastic, but it's not just any kind of plastic. It's not that, that cheap plastic that was on the Nokia um, or the Nokia Lumia that was on Boost Mobile. It's not that kind of plastic. It is a little bit more tougher of a plastic shell. And it is made to feel exactly like the Pixel 3. And since I own both phones, it really does feel like the Pixel 3 you would not think that it was like any different if you held both in your hand blindfolded. So one of my favorite things about it though is the Pixel imprint, which is the fingerprint sensor on the device. It is snappy and quick, as I just showed you guys. I'm able to get into it. Um, now, this device runs Android 9. The Android Q beta is not yet available for this phone. Uh, they did pull it down, so some people were able to update to it. But I unfortunately, when I got my device, was not able to. And so therefore, I do have to wait until June when it is available. But it is running 9Pi. And you do get the Easter egg here. So let's just draw and say hi to everybody. And thank you guys for actually coming in. And don't forget to subscribe too as well if you're just checking out my video for the first time. would much appreciate it. Um, and also hit the bell option to be notified too. So anyways, um, so the Pixel 3a... What, one, of the, one of the major things about it is that I think I gravitate towards it is just the fact that even though there's a budget option and it doesn't have the Snapdragon 845, it performs fairly, fairly well. Um, I don't really notice a difference between this and my Pixel 3. When I use it, it works just fine. Um, as it comes to audio though, you do have a bottom firing speaker. Now the other speaker is on the top too, so um, you still get dual stereo speakers, but um, one is bottom firing. And you have your camera on the top too as well. Uh, on the back of the device, you do have your main camera sensor there, which is 12.2 megapixels. It's the same camera sensor that the Pixel 3 has, along with flash, your Pixel imprint, and the Google logo at the bottom. Um, might I make a suggestion to Google to kind of put a color on that, on that G logo so it stands out a little bit. Um, but again, like I said, this phone pays homage to the Nexus brand. Um, so kind of going around that price point that we used to expect from Nexus, um, which is why I think this is like, you know, it's a throwback phone. It's a throwback phone, but for some reason, reviewers are trying to stack this thing up against flagship devices, which I really don't understand why. It's not a flagship phone, in my opinion. This is Google getting into the budget industry. This is their ticket in to go up against companies like ZTE and blue and um motorola samsung lg and like the types of budget devices they release versus what google will release as a budget option so that's where i kind of view this phone as um for those who really care about spec wise um basically it has the snapdragon 670 which is an octa-core chip um and it has the adreno 615 so that's something to um Kind of think about there um the camera itself 12.2 on the back and uh you have an 8 megapixel front facing shooter both shoot in hdr at um 30 frames per second 
1080p for the front camera. The rear camera is at um, 2160 at uh, 30 frames per second or 1080p at either 30, 60 or 120 frames per second. However, one of the things that people have been kind of like upset with the Pixel is that while it does take good still photos, people don't really like the video quality of video shot with the Pixel 3a and they said the same for the Pixel 3 as well. Now that's a preference type thing. Um, I know a lot of people are really trying to get those 60 frames per second um, like 4k videos just as much as they can but for the average consumer who wants to take a video for a memory you're not going to have any problems there at all whatsoever. Battery wise this device um, I believe it has a 3000 milliamp hour battery which it does with fast Charging the fast the, the, the wall adapter itself is a 18 watt uh, USB power delivery USB 2.0 uh, It is type C so it does have NFC and um, Bluetooth as well But uh, yeah, no wireless charging which is one of the things that I don't think is a major kill for this thing So while we're running a benchmark here so you guys can see the benchmark scores Let me just say a few other things about the device itself and the reason why that I think that this is a great option and also why I feel like that people should really stop comparing this to flagship phones. And so now we're going to run a Geekbench here. And while that is running, um, let me just tell you guys, you know, just deep down what I really think about the Pixel 3a. Because, I mean, some people have crapped on it. Some people have praised it. Right now, it's getting a lot of buzz. Even though the OnePlus 7 Pro has come out, the Pixel 3a is getting a lot of buzz. And that's just because people are really starting to see, like, what this phone can do. For it being a $400 phone... For it, you know, having a lot of the features from the Pixel 3 cut out just to make it affordable. Um, this phone really stands tall all on its own. And it's it's a first for Google to actually really think of a budget option for folks out there who really don't want to spend close to $1,000 for a phone. I mean, geez, these phones are getting very expensive. And the Pixel 3a embodies that, which is why I'm having such a great time using the device as my daily driver. And I have no feeling to switch back to my Pixel 3 at all. And that's a very bold statement. I have no feelings to, to switch back to it. The phone gives me everything that I was already getting from the Pixel 3. Don't need wireless charging. Water resistance, I really don't go around water with my phones all too much. Even if they have water resistance, I don't like taking them to water because I really don't want to risk that chance of a defective phone. So we got 1627 single core and 1593 I believe was multi-core, but I mean, that pretty much tells you, like, the experience that I have with the Pixel 3a. It's definitely worth it if you guys are looking to get a Pixel 3 device for a very cheap cost. So that's it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe and hit the bell option to know when I upload a video. And this is just my first review on it. There will be more extensive reviews as one month, two months, three months goes by. I'll let you guys know. But again, thanks for watching. And as always, aloha.